Hello Internet, my name is Quinn and this is Blondie Hacks. This is Lathe Skills number two, Tool Bits. This is a series of quick videos on how to get started in machining. If you like this content, subscribe to me on Patreon. There's a link in the description. I post exclusive project videos there on a regular basis. All right, let's dive in. The job of the tool bit is to do the actual material removal because lathes are single point cutting tools, only the very point of the tool bit is actually doing the work. And tool bits are gonna be held in a tool holder of some sort and then attached to the tool post. So uh, the most common type of tool bits that you'll encounter in the home and hobbyist shop is high speed steel. High speed steel is uh, a great place to start because it's very forgiving, it's very easy to work with, and uh, it's a good fit for uh, home and benchtop machines that are going to be smaller and have lower horsepower. You do need to grind high speed steel into the shape that you need for the type of cutting operation that you're doing. Uh, there's a learning curve with that, but you can skip past that when you're first getting started by buying pre ground sets. This is a 3 8 ground set from Grizzly. There's also a quarter inch uh, set you could buy from Little Machine Shop. And uh, this is uh, a very forgiving way to get started. High speed steel is also good for interrupted cuts. Uh, it's a little more flexible than other types of tool bits. So if you're doing things like turning down hex bar or dealing with key slots, that sort of thing, it's a very good choice. Now this is uh, carbide insert tooling, uh, which you'll see a lot in professional shops and on people with big machines. Uh, it's good for production because the uh, inserts are uh, can be rotated and you can you know use different uh, uh, types of tool bits that are quick to replace. Uh, carbide is difficult to use at home because it has minimum speeds and minimum feeds to get good results. And that means your machine has to have high horsepower and high rigidity, which is good for production, but a lot of home machinists aren't going to have uh, big enough equipment to really make good use of carbide. Uh, carbide inserts are also very expensive. High speed steel is very inexpensive these days. Uh, there's also uh, a third option called brazed carbide, which you'll see a lot for sale online. It's literally a random chunk of carbide that's been brazed onto a shank uh, as a way to inexpensively get access to carbide, which can be useful if you need to cut something very tough. Carbide is extremely tough, but it's also brittle, so it's not as good for interrupted cuts. What you'll also see in carbide are these kind of high-tech uh, profiles uh, cut into the tops of them. These are chip breakers, and uh, because carbide can be molded into fancy shapes, they can do clever things like this, which are, again, good for production. Now, with high-speed steel, you can do some amount of that. You can see this tool here, for example, has had a, a chip breaker ground into it as well. Uh, you can see that in these tools as well. So you can do some of those tricks with high-speed steel as well. And the last tool I'll show you here is this uh, boring bar, just to demonstrate that you can also get high-speed steel insert tooling. This is a high-speed steel insert, and this is a great choice for hobbyists, uh, especially for something like a boring bar, where uh, the insert is really a convenient way to, uh, to, to, to do this kind of tooling, and, uh, but uh, still giving you uh, that nice forgiving performance of high-speed steel. And the last types of tools we'll look at are the cutoff blades or parting blades. This is a carbide insert type, which has this little part right here that's replaceable. And uh, this is sort of my go-to, which is just a basic high-speed steel cutoff blade that's held in a special type of holder that's intended for cutoff blades. And again, for home machines uh, with less horsepower and less rigidity, uh, high-speed steel is really, I think, the way to go. Any tool bit is going to be held in a tool holder. This is the most common style that you're going to encounter. This is the Alors style tool holder. Of course, uh, it does a lot more than just hold the bit in place, as you can see there. Uh, it, it also allows you to set the height of the tool bit relative to the tool post. It allows you to save that setting, if you will, for each tool, which is extremely useful because what that means is if you can uh, afford to dedicate uh, one of these to each tool bit, then you can set the height once on them and you can swap these tools very quickly uh, without having to set the tool height every time, which is a huge, huge time saver. And, uh, and then of course they have these uh, dovetails on the back and everything here is precision ground. So mean, what that means is that these tool holders are repeatable. So you can take this tool out and put it back as many times as you want. And each time you do that, the cutting tip of that tool bit is gonna end up in exactly the same place relative to the material. That's extremely powerful. And we'll take a look at that on the lathe right now. So here's our tool bit installed in a tool holder, again on the Loris style tool post. And here's where the magic happens. Just like that, that tool is installed in exactly the right place relative to the 
carriage and relative to the chuck. And if I take that tool out, put another one in, and put this one back in, I know it's landed in exactly the same spot. That's extremely powerful. And you can see here how the thumb wheel is uh, catching on the edge of the tool post here. And this is what sets the height of this tool relative to the tool post and sort of saves that setting for you with each bit. Uh, this is a, a tapered wedge style uh, Alorus tool post. You might also see the piston style where there's a little piston here that sticks out the side and applies pressure to the tool post, uh, to the tool holder. But uh, either way, they're all gonna have this kind of dove, dovetail style or some variation of it. and. Uh, Again, that allows all these precision ground surfaces to guarantee that this ends up in the same place every single time. And one last thing that a lot of beginners ask about the tool post is, what's this other holder back here for? Well, of course, that's for boring bars. Boring bars typically need to be 90 degrees from a regular tool bit so that they can go inside the work in that direction. Uh, this side is also useful for other things, but primarily that's for boring bars. The last thing to know about tool posts is that you can change the angle of them, usually with a wrench of some sort. And this allows you to set the angle of the tool bit relative to the material. And the purpose of that is to get the right clearance angles for your cutting. You want to make sure that that point, that single point, is doing the cutting and no other sides of the tool bit are going to be touching the work. So every tool bit is a little bit different and so this angle allows you to get that set up just right. And again, that does not change the angle of your cut because it's only a single point there. The angle of the cut is set by moving the slides and the carriage. All right, and that's the basics of tool bits. I hope you found this useful and please tune in for the next lathe skills video coming soon. Thanks for watching.